Amen, amen. God is good, amen. Without any further delay, I want you to open up your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. Praise the Lord. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36. Verses 35 and 36. What book? Hebrews. What chapter? 10. Chapter 10. And then what verses? 35 and 36. 35 and 36. Are you there? Yes. Is your neighbor there? The word of God says, did you say no? no. Your, neighbor, your neighbor there? You going to share your Bible, your iPhone? You know, people share their Bible, but don't touch their iPhone. Amen. Amen. That's going to be part of our fast in January. Those iPhones and Androids. Uh-oh, I better stop. The Bible says in verse 35 of Hebrews chapter 10, it says, Cast not away therefore, what? Your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God what will happen you might receive the promise cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God you shall receive the promise I'll tell you stuff can happen that can make you lay your confidence down can it you ever had stuff to happen in your life, things to come up where all of a sudden your confidence is just all gone? I know I have. You know, I was going strong and, you know, just believe in God and walking in faith. And then you can go from, from 100 back down to zero, you know, when something comes up in your life. But the word of God admonishes us not to cast away our confidence, to always hold on to our confidence. I've been teaching on the, from the last two weeks on faith. And I want to close out the series today, and I'm so glad that you're here because I believe that God wants you to use your faith. And sometimes we think that we're exercising our faith when we just say, I have faith, I have faith. People ask you, you doing all right? Or do you believe God's going to help you? I've got faith. But that's not enough, amen? But how many people are about sick and tired of yourself? You ever get sick and tired of your own self? Amen. You ever just, I mean, you know, sometimes I, I've, I've had moments, Bishop, where I've looked at myself in the mirror and I said, I'm sick of myself. Amen. Sometimes we just get sick and tired of our lives. And, 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 and maybe right now you believe in God for more, for better, and for greater. Or at the very least, you may be believing God to bring you out of this time of struggle, this time of worry and fear. You see, sometimes certain things can go on for so long in our lives that we feel trapped in a never-ending cycle of defeat, discouragement, despair. You know, I don't know but I, about you, but I certainly know what it feels like, a, a minister, to, to just go through a period of time where I'm feeling discouraged discouraged in my life sometimes just when you think oh yeah I got it all together things are coming together it's gonna work out something shows up and it frustrates your faith or it messes with your mind or it robs you of your joy and your peace and so as born-again believers we have to learn and practice brother Bruce Fighting the good fight of faith. My motto is this. When I'm going through and things are hard and I don't know what I'm going to do, somewhere along the line I'm reminded to say, something's got to give. Something's got to break. Something's going down. But it won't be me. See, see, that's just, that, that, that's my motto. Certainly we know that this is a very trying time in the body of Christ. In fact, this is a very trying time in the world. And, and, and the enemy of your breakthrough, there is an enemy of your breakthrough in case you didn't know it. The devil is real. I know that we have, some people don't like to believe that or think that, but one of these days I'll, I'll have to teach on Lucifer. He was created very beautiful. He was an angel. 
But there, he's the enemy of our breakthrough, and he does everything that he can to get you and I to make a wrong move so that he has a way into our lives so he can move you out of position and break you and steal or cancel out your earth realm assignment. See, you have an assignment in the earth. You weren't put in this earth. You weren't born for nothing, but you have an assignment. But the devil doesn't want you to realize it, to see it, or to know it. In fact, Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 10 and 10, Jesus called the devil a thief. He says, the thief cometh not except to kill to steal and to destroy. He wants to destroy your purpose. He wants to destroy your reason for living. He wants to destroy everything that concerns you. But Jesus said, don't worry about it because I have come that you might have life and that how? More abundantly. And so in order to overcome your adversary, in order for you to overcome all of those problems, same problem that faced you last year, same one that faced you the year before, in order to overcome him and to succeed and make it, we've got to learn how to use our faith. You've got to learn how to stand and believe God when it makes no sense to stand and believe God. Hallelujah. As born again believers, you and I cannot afford to continue to be passive, to be quiet, and to roll over and play dead. I, we can't afford to do it. We can't sit around quietly waiting for things to happen or things to change. We've got to be advocates of change. You've got to be a change agent in, in your own life. You've got to be actively involved in your faith. See, your faith is so valuable to you that you can't sit around and not release your faith. You've got to release your faith into the atmosphere, into the spiritual realm. But your faith, understand, is your wealth. Say, my faith is my wealth. Say, it separates me. Oh, you got to get this. Say, my faith separates me from the ordinary from the so-so and from the mundane. You ever had somebody to ask you, how you doing? And you said, so-so. Mm, That's what the devil wants you to say, so-so. But when you're moving by your faith, it's not just so-so. It's this going to be all right because I dare to believe God. See, when, when you are releasing and exercising your faith, the angels recognize you. How? By your faith. Your faith in God causes people to move over and get out of the way so you can go to your next level. Oh, yeah. I've had people who had to move out of the way so that Pastor and I, can move into position. Oh, I'll share testimony with you in a few minutes. Your faith is what attracts good things and good people to you. Because, listen, your miracle is at stake. Your marriage is at stake. Your next wealthy place is at stake. Your promotion, you've got to release your faith and exercise your faith in this season. We know that according to Romans 12 and 3, go ahead and turn there, that God has given to every man the measure of faith. Come on, go there, go ahead and turn there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, come on. Where are my students at? Luke, John, Acts, and then what? Romans. We know that according to Romans 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, are you there? 
For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think how? Soberly, according as God has dealt to every man, what? The measure of faith. So God has dealt to every man and to every woman the measure of faith. You've got a measure of faith. That person sitting behind you, turn around and look at him real quick on the side of you. They've got a measure of faith. They might not be using it. They might not act like it. But the Bible tells us that God has given you a measure of faith. Amen? That's why we're not to have an over-exaggerated opinion about who we are. But you're to think about who you are according to your faith. Amen? To the faith that you're exercising on the inside of you. So we know that every man has a measure. And then in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and 38, go ahead and say that and we'll be rolling. Go ahead and turn to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and verse 38, very important scripture. We were just in Hebrews 10. Amen. So 10 and 38, let me get there with you. The Bible says, is that what I want? Yeah, yeah, let's look at it. You there? It says, now the just shall live, how? By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So God tells us, look, I've given you a measure of faith. Now I want you to live by your faith. I like to say it like this. Faith is how we roll. Faith is how we operate. Faith is how we do business. In other words, just like you, Pastor and I, we don't always have the resources to transact business in the earth realm even the business that God has given us to transact we don't always have the resources or the money to do it but we have the measure of faith that God has given unto us and we know how to use our faith in order to get what we need and it's important to know how to live by faith because as you begin to roll by faith, everything you do, you do it with an expectation that what you need will be supplied. Everything we do, we do it by faith. We, we, we opened up these doors in this church by faith. See, when God gives us an, an assignment, we don't just say, I have faith, I have faith. But you know what we do when God tells us to do something, son? We immediately begin to release our faith. See, you release your faith. You say, well, pastor, how do I release my faith? Come on, help me out. My faith, let me just say this for the first time here today. Do you know that your faith has not even been released until you do what? Number one, ask God for something. Number two, believe God for something. Number three, confess that it is done. Number four, act on what you say you believe. Number five, have an expectation. And then, oh God, by the way, I need to forgive. I, there's somebody that I need to forgive. See, see, if, if, if I want to release my faith, Bishop, if I want to release my faith, uh, 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 my friend, they know when I, you know, when I get to preaching and I can't even remember nobody's name, Rhonda, I just say my friend, my daughter, my sister. Your faith has not even been released to go to work for you until you say, Father, I ask you for what I need in order to get the job done. Father, I believe that you're going to do it. Or really, Father, that it's already done. So I confess that by your stripes I'm healed. I have an expectation that I am healed, and then you begin to act on it. You begin to act like you have the victory in whatever it is you're praying. And just in case there's somebody that you haven't forgiven, you go and get it right. See, then your faith is working for you. It's activated. The angels begin to pay attention. You get heaven involved in your earth round assignment. You set in motion divine intervention. See, understand that when Tom and I are doing business on behalf of the church, or we're doing it personally, like I told you last week, we can't always see or, or touch what we confess is already ours. But the words that come out of our mouth are faith-filled words. We're not talking defeat. 
We didn't buy and purchase this building in this prime location on a defeatist attitude, but we did it by our faith. We began to speak faith-filled words. We begin to speak words about the possibilities of what can be if we believe. Now, the bank don't have to know that you don't have the money. I'll be honest. Don't tell your neighbor. But everything that we have done in the church, personally, we didn't have the money. When we first went into business, we didn't have the money. All we had was a name of the business. Now, does that make sense in the natural? We had the name of the business. We got business cards made. We didn't have a building. We didn't have no children for our daycare center. But we had faith in what God said. And so we went to the bank pastor and said, oh, there's a new bank in the neighborhood. Let's go there and see if they'll give us some money. All we need is about $12,000 to get started. We went up to the bank, sit down, Pastor Tom did, sat down with the president of the bank and told him, we know that you know, you're new to the neighborhood. We need $12,000. And if I'm not mistaken, Pastor, didn't he tell you that you were, didn't he approve it before you even left? And, 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 and at the time, how was our credit? You don't have to say nothing, baby. You don't have to say nothing. You don't even have to talk. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Every assignment that God gives you, you don't have what it takes to get it done. You may not have the money, but your faith in God will make you whole. We've got to dare to believe God. See, when you're walking in faith, heaven begins to line up with what you say. That was no coincidence, that thing that happened in your life, that person that came into your life. That wasn't a coincidence. That was God's divine favor working on your behalf. When we bought this building, it was God's favor. Pastor, oh, he reminded me. He said, you forgot to share that. When we bought this building, many of you remember when we first moved in, we were renting it. And the bank had told us that we could buy it for $675,000. I believe it was even lower than that. But when it came time to buy it, they began to back down on the deal because they realized this was a prime location. They were putting in light rail and that the value would go up uh, very quickly. In fact, the the building, uh, the last appraisal we had was valued at almost $2 million. We bought it for $607,000. That was just five years ago. So the bank began to back down. You would have thought we had the cash to pay for it. We went to, you know, went to talk to them. How dare you back down out of this deal? You've already signed the papers, told us we could buy it. Now, mind you, we didn't have the money to do it, but we talked like we did. We were talking about, we we were saying what God's word says. So you say what God's word says, and God is under divine obligation, hear me now, to bring it to pass when you have faith in God. Remember the Bible says if you have simply the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And it has to obey. So we were talking like, Bishop, we had the money in the bank. What? Y'all going back out of the deal? I mean, and there were people who wanted to buy it. They were coming, standing out there looking. And we were like, we ain't going down like that. Something's got to give. Something's got to break. Something's going down. But it won't be us. Amen? So... So we got to a place where they said, no, no, in order to get them to sell us the building, even after they had signed the papers, because that's how valuable this property was, and and somebody else was willing to give them so much money. At the time, twice as much as we were going to pay. And so they they were going to go to court. Well, no, pastor said, you're going to sell me this building, and we're going to take you to court. Mind you, we didn't have no money. They showed up, 
with two lawyers. Pastor Tom showed up with two lawyers. When they saw them, you know what they did? They stepped out and said, okay, okay, all right, all right. I'll tell you, they didn't even want to go into court then. Tell you what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll give you uh, the next, what did they say? 30 days or 90 days to come up with all the money. See, before they were going to finance it. Now they want all their money. So we were like, okay, we got this. We got it. See, we, 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 we said what God said. We said what God said. Got down to the wire five days before closing. We didn't have no money. You know, the church, we were in a building project raising money, but we hadn't raised that kind of money. Not even close. But about five days before it was time to close, the, uh, uh, the realtor, whoever he was, Pastor, you know all that he was, came in with this woman who said, uh, Jim told me what the bank was trying to do to you guys. I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and give you the money to buy the building and y'all can just pay me back. Can just pay me back. And she went to closing with us and wrote a check for it. And before we even got to closing, they tried to bring up something else. Well, y'all need to pay the taxes that were on the building for some year. And, you know, she said, I'll write the check and wrote the check. Why? Because our faith was not in ourselves. We had faith in what God said. We had already asked God for something, believed that he would do it, confessed that it was ours. We had an, a, a, a divine expectation that God would do it. We were acting on what we said we believed. If you believe in God for the job, you don't just sit at home. You get up and you do something. And somebody's miracle is being held up because you won't forgive. Forgive them. I've always told you, you can forgive them. You don't have to trust them. Just forgive them. Amen. You have to live with them. Just forgive them. Amen. Heaven will begin to line up with God's plan for your life as soon as you release your faith and get in proper faith. We, brought this, we bought this building on the favor of God, our faith. Because when you are in proper faith, do you know what God will do for you? We learned last week that when you're in proper faith, God will give you a plan of action. Number one, a plan of action. He'll show you what to do. Number two, when you are in faith and you've released your faith, God will give you the wisdom of God. Wisdom comes from the word of God. When you're in proper faith, God will show you favor. When my money runs out, what happens? Favor keeps on spending. You have the money to do everything. He will give you favor. God will give you a miracle if it's necessary. And then he will give you, number five, strength to endure until your change comes. Amen? See, in the beginning... I, I told you, I didn't really understand about walking in faith. I really believe that Pastor Tom has a gift of faith. Some people have just that gift of faith. They can believe God for anything, anytime. I have seen God do things in our life, supernatural things, that only God could do. I mean, I'm like, I don't even know how this happened. I'm just walking in this miracle. But when, at the beginning, uh, when, when we first were born again, I, I really didn't... Walk in faith at the level that he was walking in faith. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll outwalk him. Come on, you want to get in faith over this? Let's get with it. But at that time, I didn't. In fact, if things didn't happen in the time frame that I thought that they were supposed to happen, if they didn't happen the way that I thought they were supposed to happen, or if there was any kind of interference in the spirit realm or even in the natural realm, my faith would be canceled. It would. I mean, if anything happened to just shut me down, if somebody said no, if we went to the bank and the bank said no, that was it. Curtains came down on my faith. The lights went out on my faith. 
Amen. It, it was. Last act. Okay, I guess it's not going to happen. I guess that wasn't God's will. Some of you right now are saying something is not God's will. doesn't mean that it's not God's will because it hasn't happened yet. See, just because something is delayed or it hasn't happened yet, it doesn't mean that it's not God's will. But see, you know what we do, brother? What we do is we jump to that. It's not God's will. What do we do? We're trying to excuse ourselves out of the blessing of God that comes by us using our faith. We're some lazy Christians. We don't want to use what we've got to get what we want. You've got to learn how to use what you've got. And if I don't have anything else, I've got my measure of faith. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, oh. oh. Say, oh. oh. Say, if I don't have anything else, I've got a measure of faith. You know what you're doing when you excuse yourself? Well, I guess it wasn't God's will. I guess God didn't say it. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're doing. You're doing what the Bible says not to do in Hebrews 10 and 38. The Bible says that if you draw back, my soul will have no pleasure. So now all of a sudden you got a drawback spirit. God didn't say it. Uh -uh, what did he say in 1038? If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Don't draw back in fear because somebody said no. They don't even know God. Uh-uh, if they tell you no, you go to the next bank and the next bank. You go until you get the answer from God. In fact, when we were getting ready to uh, uh, refinance to pay the lady back, we went to this bank, and the guy who we met with, the banker, he was looking at us some kind of way. I'm talking about some kind of way. That we, and he was talking to us some kind of way. We knew something was off. You know what I mean? He was looking for every excuse not to do it for us. And then he'd say something. He was so discouraging. I mean, we talk to a lot of bankers, so we know how they talk to you. We know how to talk to bankers. We don't go in there any kind of way or some kind of way. We go in there empowering and strengthening under the anointing of God. But, but, but he was filling us out, talking to us some kind of way. We knew he didn't want to do it. But see, here's the thing that I've learned. You go to the next one, the next one, the next person until God sets his approval on your transaction, whether it's in a, 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 a marriage. You know how you do? Because one person didn't work out, well, I give up on love. I'm through with the love. Huh? Yeah, no, 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 you don't give up on love because somebody did you wrong. You go to the next one and the next one. Did I say that right? I didn't. Okay, Bishop is in the house. I, I, I didn't say that right. But y'all know what I meant. Okay, all of you that are streaming today, wherever you are, you know what I meant. You know I didn't mean it the way it came out. I'm from Waco, and sometimes it come out like that. You wait on God. In other words, you just don't give up on love or give up on getting the loan or whatever you need to do because somebody didn't Work right, uh-uh, you let that knucklehead go, knucklehead girl, knucklehead guy. See, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Ask me what's the problem. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. I'm going to move on and I'm going to draw this to an end. The problem is we don't always have the patience to operate effectively in our faith. But our faith, catch this, is developed and our faith grows in our patience.
And we don't want to or, or like to cooperate with patience. I know I don't. And I realize why I don't. Because I'm used to folk telling me, just wait, just wait. When I was growing up, mom and daddy, you know, because big family, a lot of kids, no money. They would say, you have to wait. And, and wait was patience. Be patient. And so when I became an adult, because a lot of times mom and dad weren't always able to keep their promise, trust became an issue. And so this patience thing and this trust thing, you know, was like, oh, you know, I, patience. But your faith is developed and it grows in your patience. Whether or not you know it, patience is not overrated. Patience has saved a lot of people from disaster, from a mess. How many of you can tell the truth and admit patience has saved you from a mess? Even when you weren't being patient, patient was there working on your behalf. God made you wait. See, patience will make you wait even when you don't want to wait. And I have learned that just because I say I'm being patient, that's just like faith. It don't mean faith. I don't mean I'm really being patient. I'm just forced to wait. But it doesn't, just because you're forced to wait doesn't mean you're being patient. Go with me to Hebrews 6 and 10. Hebrews 6 and 10. And when you get there, shout hallelujah. 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 See, sometimes you don't want to wait, amen? Patience is a co-worker to your faith. Understand that God knows exactly where you are on your destiny track. God knows where you are on your journey. And as we grow and develop in our faith, we realize how much God wants to help us. And we come to realize that God hasn't forgotten about you, even though it feels like it because you've been waiting a long time for something to happen. But in life, there are going to be times of extreme challenge and extreme pain. There are going to be times when you'll have to make some adjustments and just move over and step aside and hold on and wait. But the Bible lets us know in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love for which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Well, I ain't ministered to no saints. You've ministered to people when you didn't even know it. Amen. That time when you gave them a hand, that's ministering to God's people. That time when you help somebody out, whether it was $5, $2, or just helped them, took them to the store. See, you were ministering in God's name. And verse 11 says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance. How long? Of hope. How long? Till the end. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through, read that with me, Faith and, faith and what? Patience do what? The promises of God are inherited through your faith and your patience. Patience is the capacity, and I'm going to let you get out of here, to accept or tolerate delay or trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Shall I repeat it? Somebody said it was good. <laughs> Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Do you know what I realize, Candace? In some areas of my life, I'm just going through. But I'm not patient. I'm only waiting because I'm forced to wait. <laughs> but I'm upset about it, and I don't like it. And it shows every time I get in certain situations. Thank you. But your faith is developed 
and it's made strong as you patiently. God, I choose to patiently wait on you. And so if I'm going to live my life by faith and walk by my faith and arrive at the right destination, not just some uh, a destination that I arrive at because I say, well, I guess God didn't want me to do that. He wanted me to do this. A lot of people at the wrong destination because they settled for the first thing they saw. I must learn to practice Faith, patience with my faith. The promises of God are inherited through patience and endurance. I walk by my, come on, talk to me, by my what? And not by, don't raise up your hand on this one, but how many people you dare to tell the truth? You say, Pastor. I hadn't even released my faith and didn't even know it. I didn't even know it, Pastor. I hadn't asked God. Somebody, your mama might have told you or your grandma. You know how grandma tell you stuff. Grandma did the best she could. She'd tell you stuff and you believed it. Because grandma would live pretty good. And she said, don't ask God for nothing, baby. I don't ask God for nothing. That ain't nothing but a trick of the devil. How am I going to re release my faith if I don't ask God for anything? The Bible says he knows the plan that he has for me, and it's a good plan. Wanda? Froggy? I love you. The Bible says it's not evil to give you a future and a hope. Pookie, if you don't ask God, how will you receive? The Bible says ask, and it shall be given unto you. You receive. You ask by faith, daring to believe that all things are possible to him that believe. It's not by might or by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. I've learned to trust God and to wait. I don't like it. I like to wait. I don't even like being patient. I would be lying if I say, oh, I'm so patient. I like being, I don't like being patient. But I've learned to embrace patience. I've learned to embrace it and just confess out of my mouth, Lisa, it's going to be all right. Just walk steady. Rock steady. It's going to be all right. My faith will make me whole. What did the woman say? If I can just touch the hem of his garment. Sometimes we touch the hem of his garment by our faith. The man said, every time the water is stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in. <laughs> My God. Some of us are just like that man. Every time somebody else get ahead of me, I'm always a day late and a dollar short. But do you believe? Do you have faith in God that your miracle is at hand right now? Because if you believe, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Woo! Yes! How is it going to happen? You ain't got no money. You don't have enough money to do that. No, but by your faith. Faith is the substance of the of things. Oh, I'm closing. I promise. I promise. One more thing and I'm going to close. I promise. What does that mean? That means... I don't have to have any sense realm evidence. I don't have to see. I don't have to hear anything. I don't have to be able to touch it. I don't have to be able to taste it. Which one am I missing? I don't have to be able to smell it. But if God said, I said, those are my sense realm. Senses. Hearing. Don't have to hear nothing. Uh-uh, it's not about that. 
is believing for that for which there are no sense realm evidence that would make cause me to believe that. But I believe God because his word says it. And God's word is spirit and it's life. And every time I speak God's word, something happens. Oh, that's why I practice the word. I walk around my house practicing the word. If there's a scripture I want to see manifest, I get it. And I walk around the house, Bruce, and I begin to say the word of God. I read it until it gets down in my spirit. And then I begin to cry out, Abba, Father, I've got it. I've got it. Abba. God has not given you a spirit of bondage again to fear. But he's given you a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba. <laughs>